This is a very special event uh, for me and for a lot of the people that are involved in it, I think, too. And I hope you're going to enjoy it. But I first want to say happy inauguration evening. And I'm very happy. And I just want to say also, who's sleepy now, right? Who is sleepy now? Um, I'm Susan Williamson. I'm the festival director. And I want to welcome you to the 17th annual Palm Beach Poetry Festival, Thomas Lux Memorial Reading featuring Gregory Orr and the Parkington Sisters. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our founder and president, Miles Kuhn, and his wife, Mimi. Our sponsors, Morgan Stanley, the Legacy Group of Atlanta, Gladstone Multimedia, Lee Gladstone, I hope he's here somewhere, um, the Cultural Council of Palm Beach County, Visit Florida, Murder on the Beach Bookstore, the National Endowment for the Arts, and all of our other sponsors and supporters to whom we are so very grateful. Um, lyric Poetry at the University of Virginia. That's how Gregory Orr came to be my mentor and my friend. There was a time when a citizen scholar could hope to attend one of Greg's workshops. And I guess I have to admit, I was a UVA alum, citizen scholar, just arrived in Charlottesville and hoping for help with some poems I scribbled in quiet, in private. And I got in even after I mixed him up with Charles Wright. Um, Greg's encouragement helped me to believe in myself as a poet. Yesterday in his interview, Lauren Boselar asked Greg about his long teaching career. What's important to know about Greg is that he's a teacher both inside and outside of a classroom and a friend who is unfailingly generous with his time and passionate about poetry and writing poems. That Greg collaborated with the Parkington sisters to create the beloved a poetry and song cycle when originally asked by the Geraldine Dodge Foundation is no surprise to any of us who know him well. It's a match made in uh, lyric poetry. The Parkington sisters are from Wellfleet, Massachusetts and come from a lineage of musicians raised playing and writing music together Rose, Sarah, and Ariel are songwriters and multi-instrumentalists who incorporate the eclectic songwriting passions of artists like Joni Mitchell, Neil Young, and June Carter, but with their very own soaring melodies, vibrant harmonies, and string arrangements. They have made lyric poetry meet music in tonight's presentation of the Beloved, a poetry and song cycle, which is in three parts. The film you're about to see took plenty of artistry and teamwork and bravery, in my opinion. After screening The Beloved, we will have a Q&A with Greg and the Parkington sisters. But for now, uh, take it away, Abby, and we'll see The Beloved a poetry and song cycle. Her eye and my eye, her gazing creates me. His voice in my ear, I'm seized by hearing. How because of the beloved I come into being. Under her touch, all of me shudders. Voice of the beloved, searching me out, seeking me, speaking me, speaking 
herself first, speaking his own being in order to awaken mine. Even before speech revealed your secret, there was looking. And even before so, that gave you away, there was gazing. The beloved felt your eyes upon her. He dimly understood why you looked at him that way. Speech of the eyes, the stare, and the glimpse. The glance that lingers. Voice of the beloved searching me. Speaking me, speaking me, speaking herself first, speaking his own being to awaken such gazing and not want more. Hoarding your joys and despairs as if they were clothes you bought but never wore. Look at this bright shirt, a possibility you glimpsed but feared to seize. The beloved is waiting. You have a date. Put on that shirt before it fades. So who will give first and who will give most? My bold phrasing pleases me. I think it proves I'm in charge and can sharply bargain over parts I still control. To my surprise, he simply insists I hold nothing back. Her only request, I surrender all I possess. We could say no to love but love itself doesn't say no we could say yes yet it might not arrive any faster 
seldom responding to our whims or commands. The mysteries move at their own pace. Whole years go by, and we truly never catch a glimpse of the beloved. And then suddenly. If to say it once and once only, and still to say yes, and say it complete, say it as if the word filled the whole moment with its absolute saying. Later for but, later for if. Only the single syllable that is the beloved, that is the world. That is the beloved. That is. So many years, such a long journey, only to reach the surface of ourselves. And how much further beyond the beloved beckoning with her otherness, with his gesture that promises to reveal what we need to know why it is I'm alive. Hold off rain. Of course, my garden craves water. But the peonies are in full blossom. If you fall now, their petals will all be scattered. Wait a day. Let them feel the pure joy of opening. Fall tomorrow. Then you can show them love is also a shattering. Closing my fists, tightening my grip, sealing my lips. Acting as if by holding something back I'll get to keep it It was never so Let go, let go It was never so Let go, let go Each kiss you give could be the last Each kiss you give could be the last The stop is stone
if a peach leads you into the world, into an appreciation of its delights. How much more so the beloved. A morsel of peach meat, a single kiss, and you know pleasure has depths beyond measuring. All this not subject to loss, but certain of it, guaranteed to vanish. Therefore, more precious, therefore brought back by poems and songs. The mouth open as if to sing, as if to sink its brave teeth in a peach. This one from teeth, playful nip on your thigh. Hours later, it still hurts. Next day, a bruise tender to the touch. Whenever you rub it, you think of her, you think of him. Most poems agree. What we humans have in common is our senses. And they're our greatest source of joy. And so grief enters through the portals of bliss. Grief will come to you Grip and cling all you want It makes no difference Catastrophe It's just waiting to happen Lies you can count on it The wind swirl of the world
catastrophe is just waiting to happen. Thus, you can count on it. Flow and swirl of the world, carried along by a dark current. Flow and swirl. can do is keep swimming all you can do is keep singing all you can do is keep swimming all you can do is keep singing all you can do is keep swimming all you can do is keep When we lost the beloved, we lost the world. A crack opened between us and all else. Briefly, perhaps, but how deep it was. Who could forget what was glimpsed there? We stepped carefully across, or leaped and hoped we'd reach the other side. But the chasm was real, and we were wordless, worldless, and bereft of joy. formula beforehand. We don't get to watch as it's mixed. No one tells us what's in it. We lift it to our lips. Azure elixir that burns our lips to crystal. We let death take him without a word of protest. None of us spoke up, afraid to make a ruckus, afraid death might notice us. That diminished us. When the coffin was 
To learn by heart is to learn by hurt. Grief inscribing its wisdom in the soft tissue. Song you sing, poem you are. Finger moving, precise as a phonograph needle along the groove of scar. When the coffin was closed and the lid screwed down, when it was fed into the furnace and flames consumed it, your eyes were useless. What tears could put out that fire? And so you shut them, let the lids of your eyes close over the beloved's body. For a while now, darkness and what you see will be inside you. Hunkered down, Nerve numb in the carnal hut, the cave of self, while outside a storm rages. Huddled there, rubbing together white sticks of your own ribs, praying for sparks in that dark where tinder is heart, where tender is not.
Sometimes it happens, and who knows why. The world suddenly turns ugly and decides to crush you. Don't waste time trying to understand. Just fight for your life. Do all you can to survive. That's what Jacob did on the riverbank when he was ambushed by that cruel angel. All night he fought against a silent giant malice that was determined to destroy him. Yes, he came through it alive. I'm with you on that. By all means, let's celebrate what a doughty human can do against impossible odds. But who says the actual battle was the worst of it? There's also aftermath. I wish Jacob good luck trying to figure out why God would send such a creature to do such a job. Maybe he got a blessing. Maybe not. But I'm personally certain of this much. As that bleak dawn came on and he sat in the mud, recovering, rubbing his torn shoulder and bruised legs. Jacob felt his heart filling with a bitter wisdom, blended of tears, rage, fear, and shame. For me, the only question is, after that, what cup, what cup could he drink from? How easy to give up hope. How easy to draw death over you like a black cloak. Cover your face, your eyes. Stand there like a dead tree. I did that, claiming it was penance. Claiming I was sorry I was alive after the beloved died. Who was I fooling? No one demanded I act that way. Least of all, the ones I loved, who longed to live again and could not, unless I uttered their names, unless I told their stories, unless I felt in my own bones, how much they loved the world. No use in closing your eyes now. After the lightning flash, is it already bliss to abyss, one quick slip, ditto for kiss to chasm, same with rapture to fracture, all joy leads to disaster. is what comes after. Love without loss, that's hard to measure. How can we test 
its death. Easy enough to cherish what's always there. So easy you forget to bother. stops and begins again on the other side of loss. but to make loss the place where beauty starts, where the heart understands for the first time the nature of its journey. Love, yes, the body of the beloved is a gift bestowed, but only temporarily given freely, but now to be earned, given without thought, and now loss has made us thoughtful. If deepest grief is hell, when the animal self wants to lie down in the dark and die, also. If deepest grief is hell, then the world returning, not soon, not easily, must be heaven. The joke you laughed at must be heaven, or the funny thing the cat did at its food dish. Whatever guides you back to the world, that dark so deep, the tiniest light will do. Good even to 
disputes that we learn first and most by heart. But what we learn has no word until words arrive and the real work can begin. Singing that transfigures, saying that say. In the beloved out of the grave Singing that transfigures Saying that saves Lifting the beloved out of the grave Human heart, that tender engine Love revs it, loss stalls it. What can make it go again? The poem, the poem. Rending, tearing it into a thousand pieces, but still your life. In love itself didn't end. strange way to mend river inside the river world within the world all we have is words river inside the river world within the world all we have is words to reveal All we have is words to reveal the rose that the rose obscures. Grief today, joy's on its way. Joy today, sorrow tomorrow. Those who don't feel will never heal. To suffer in silence, self-violence. To sing, that's the great thing. It's our job to keep the sweet machine of it running as smoothly as it can. With words repairing where it wears out, where it breaks down. With songs and poems keeping it going, with whispered endearments greasing its gears. Praising all creation, praising the world. Oh, I know, the beloved every time, always the beloved. But the beloved is gone. We could lie down on the ground and weep our lives away. We could stamp our feet and refuse like little children. And what would that accomplish? Better to sing our sorrow song. It's only words, but it's words that bring the beloved back. 
Why should it all be lost? Why should time take away that day by the river? Surely the storerooms of oblivion are full to bursting. Surely to bring back that single scene in all its glory wouldn't harm the order of things. If only in the words of a song or poem, if only for a moment, restoring that moment. Postmortems, please. The world is immortal. The world renews itself. What about poems and songs? Do they perish? Maybe they only vanish a while. Maybe they go underground to gather some other knowledge and come back in another form. New words, a new melody, yet somehow the same beloved singing the same song. The beloved moves through the world, is the world, becomes the hundred things we love or the one and only person we love. Shifting, restless, 
refusing to incarnate in a final form. As if to teach us to keep our eyes moving if we want to see the bird flitting from bush to tree. There it is. No, there. No, it's hidden now. You can't see it, but you can hear its song. Some phrases move slow as a worm, chewing a tunnel through dirt. Others swift as a bird. Always it's the beloved they're seeking. She could be hiding above. He could be buried below. Sorrow songs trying their best to digest the thick dark. Songs of joy whizzing past so fast they're gone before we notice. There's no fixed to boat That each body she inhabits Is only a temporary home She casts off forms as eagerly As lovers shed food I accept that he's just passing Half hour or the stone And yet it makes me dizzy She shifts in fluid motions Becoming other things I want to stop it If only briefly I want to love her to the surface And catch her In this net of words Temporary outlast the world they describe? Do the things fall away, leaving only the husks of their names? And what does their perishing ask of us? Lift up, lift up. A song could redeem them. A poem could bring them to life again. Don't we owe the world at least that much that gave itself so freely to us?
This is what was bequeathed us. This earth the beloved left and leaving left to us. No other world but this one. Willows and the river and the factory with its black smokestacks. Only this day on which we're living together. No meaning but what we find here. No purpose but what we think. That and the beloved's clear instruction. When the beloved died, our world was destroyed. The one we made by placing him or her at the center. If we're patient and lucky, he might enter another beyond what we knew or wanted. A world of risk and feeling one where nothing under us will ever again be steady. And even to stand, we'll need to learn to dance. Doesn't the world demand we dance? Doesn't it insist on it? And why not? Why not? Why not? Look at the leaves, look at the weeds, look at the least blade of grass in the breeze. Why not? None of them begs off or offers excuses, none of them refuses. Doesn't the world demand we dance? Doesn't it insist on it? And why not? Why not? Look at the leaves, look at the weeds, look at the least spread of grass in the breeze. None of them begs off or offers excuses, none of them refuses. Doesn't the world demand we dance? Doesn't it insist on it? And why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Fire hydrant, everything. 
There you go. We did it. <laughs> hey, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Greg. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. What an amazing, an amazing work. Yay, I bravo so for you. It. I don't know how you did it. Hey, Trisha. <laughs> that was so wonderful. <laughs> So we have we have um, a little over a hundred people in the audience now. Um, somebody's asking if there's any CD we can buy. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick answer. You know, I, I was just asking Greg the same thing because the music is so beautiful, and I would just love to have my life there. Yeah. Well, we'll um, we'll probably have a recording of the performance maybe at some point and make it available. Yeah. Um, so let me see, let me get into the Q&A here. Yeah, I'm going to go. Bye. Love you guys so much. Love oh, you. Love you love too. You. Beloved, beloved one. <laughs> um, I'm a little confused by my, my view. Hold on a second. That'll be better. Okay. So I'm looking at the Q&A. Thank you everybody for coming. Um, I guess to start off a Q&A, um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the process. I, I understand that you spent some time together at one point since this was done, this particular video was done in two locations separately 
um, but you spent some t time together when you were composing and 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 working the the thing together. How did how was that to work together with Greg and each other? It was amazing. I I thought it was amazing. It was really <laughs> really fun. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> rephrasing my question. I'm curious to know what was the process to combine music and poetry? It started with a phone call. Well, I mean, first there was the idea that Martin Farewell came up with this sort of proposition to us. But then Greg, I think there was a phone call. I think we were on the Cape and we started with a phone call to you, right? I think so. It makes yeah. sense, yeah. <laughs> and I what? thought I might have some material that sort of held together thematically. Yeah. And you said, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> and then we started doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so arranging I mean, it. Yeah. I mean, I was so technologically impaired that you had to explain to me what an audio <laughs> recording was. Because I you asked me the first thing I did is I sent you an audio recording yeah. of the poems recited. Yeah. I guess it's right. also a cop. And then you just did magic. They just, this, you, you just took, you took these different poems and you said, this would be much better as a song. And boom. <laughs> I don't know if we said much better. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, yeah. I said that. I say that. I say at a certain point, I thought, maybe I should just get out of this completely and let <laughs> It all be song, but I, I just, well, you know, there it was. We did it over audio for a while, mm -hmm. and then we invited you up to the Adirondacks where we had a place, and really we were just there for the weekend, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Long days. You come already, mostly figured it out, and it was. <laughs> yeah we sort of we we came with sort of sketches so we took like sort of we listened to Greg's the way that Greg read the poems and sort of composed then even the songs with kind of taking in you know his rhythm and even his key the, his pitch um right. even you know so we came with sort of like yeah sketches not, I don't know if it was sketches they were a little bit more than sketches but really? kind of still sketchy because <laughs> right <laughs> sketch sketch <laughs> sketches of songs <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe we came in and and we were trying to piece it together and that was the coolest part just kind of the flow of it and how to make it move and that was just so cool or if, if there it needed music underneath just how to flow was was just a cool process to figure that out together and that's what i remember hearing it the first time i thought how did they figure that out how did they know that you know, some things were poem and some things were combinations and the flow. And some things were a standalone, turn the poem into a song. Well, you remember I told you they were geniuses. <laughs> you did say that. Yes, <laughs> you did. That was the trick. But also I was, I, I remember saying to them, I said, well, you know, you can't, there's certain words you can't sing, right? There's certain lines that couldn't be turned into song. And I said, for example, catastrophe, <laughs> and which I was in one of the words. And they proceeded to sing catastrophe just fine, thank you. I was, I, I was amazed, still am. I said, also, I, I know there's one that, where I talk about the blues. And I said, okay, I make a simple confession. I've always loved when, uh, blues guitarists make a sound like a train leaving town, you know, mm -hmm. picking up steam. And Rose says, no problem. And there it was. And I just thought, wow, this is transforms it, you know? It's like the music I heard was there. Right. Uh, somebody's asking about, um, someone who arrived late is asking, are, are you, um, are the Parkingtons related? And <laughs> yes. <laughs> those are sisters if I ever saw them. <laughs> yeah. You're uh, quite related. They're related. <laughs> yeah. 
So I went scrambling when I first saw this to look what book, oops, what, what book was, um, what, what book the poems came from. Yeah. And I, because I, I know the, I know the beloved, many of the beloved poems in the first book. And I went in the first book and I was like, I know this is not it <laughs> yeah. concerning the book that is the body of the beloved. And then I, and then I got to river, river inside the river and it, and it was all like sort of, Real? Okay, this is it, where we it, are, but yeah. It's really from three different books. You know, I mean, the poems were, yeah. They're, they're you not know, all there. The, yeah, they're not. The beloved not. poems are probably scattered across three books at this point. And there were, the stuff we performed was really from, you know, chosen from all three of those. And of course it wasn't in that sequence. That was a sequence we uh, created for this event. Um, ultimately, I hope to put all the beloved stuff in a single book, but, but who knows? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I almost thought of sending a libretto with this, you know, that people could follow, but then, you know, then you wouldn't be listening as much and it's so beautiful. I know. Sorry songs so i have another question in this um for for you greg um did you see these poems differently after collaborating in this process and hearing the music all together revisiting them as you worked on it i thought they were so much more interesting as songs i mean i love them I, sometimes i can't you know, I can't get some of those songs out of my head. And I never felt that way about my poems ever. I think poets, lyric poets, you know, you, you dream that the poem can rise to song. But, ooh, you know, this was it. I mean, you know, and my words were getting simpler and simpler as I get older and older. It's the brain cells dying, you know, so I get simpler and simpler. But... It just was, it, the thing about songs, it's sim, the words are simple, but it goes deep. And I, who can explain that? Well, they can explain it. I can't. Yeah, I think for the sisters that the way that music touches in a, in a chord that's not the same, I don't know if you can speak to that. It, it's, it's a different set of strings inside the, inside the human being, isn't it really? But it's the same. I, I wanted to say, um, you know, I don't think a day goes by where I don't think of one of your poems or hear the line, yeah. whether it's just a word that would trigger it or the, the melody. And I think that's the mysterious thing about lyrics and music together, that combination. But it's true. I think of them all of every day. It hits me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, somebody is asking also uh, when is the DVD coming out I want to show this to friends <laughs> and then um, the collaborative energy really was beautiful did the singing inspire further poems for the performance how did you get it synced up so well that might be actually a question for our videographer in a way <laughs> um, but it, you guys it, we couldn't have done it without you for sure and then also, Greg, can you share about Sufi influences on your beloved cycle and poems? So I guess we should say um, about the collaborative energy inspiring something new. Is that right? Yeah. Anybody? <laughs> I think we want to we want to set more more of Greg's poems yeah. to music. Yes. Yay. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to do that, and then you know, <laughs> things happen. But I I sure hope we do it again, and and more. You know, well, there are a lot of beloved poems I've got. There are more where those came from. So, I, you know, I don't know what it would be like, but I I. I I've already, I've got the poems ready for another song cycle. Yes. 
There we go. Any anytime I read one of your poems, I'm like, mm. <laughs> and I start to hear the melody coming in. Even for this project, I was like, maybe I could just see if we could add one more song. Yeah, okay. yeah, add, yeah. add a little more music here. And then I was like, okay, no, we gotta focus. Exactly. You always want to tweak. <laughs> I know, I know. I like, and, uh, what, I, what I have to say, what one of the things that amazes me about turning the poem into song is I just love the way you can go through a stanza and then go back and pick it up again, mm -hmm. you know, so that it's like, it just, it just deepens everything that happened in that stanza. And then you go on to the next stanza. Whereas when you're reciting a poem, all I can do is go line one, line two, line three, line, line nine, line 10, poem over. But with a song, you know, you just get some place where it's, you know, uh, where, you know, I, there's I, just so many going through my head right now, I can't say it, but <laughs> I mean, you just get these things and you lift them up and bring them back. And I love that because it just, it, 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 it's, I don't want to say stretches this, the poem out, but it, it just opens up the depths in it by circling back. And it's, it's all a fluid thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. If only I had a voice, I would. <laughs> Never into this silly you you do have quite the voice, Greg. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> and and on, then take that back. I <laughs> want to say, and then also to hear you recite a certain line after it's been refrained and sung again and again in a song, to hear it recited it gives it even that much more power after hearing it from song it, it's so cool mm -hmm. it's hard to understand but uh. tip of the hat to martin farrowell again yes about, you know just you, thinking martin. oh well these two groups they should get together and do this so again that was thank you martin it was an, an amazing idea and he also was present the first time we collaborated and there was a certain point where we got to the well, I would say section two, where things get dark, the oh. loss of the beloved and stuff. And to be honest, I didn't want to go into, I didn't, didn't want to go as dark as some of the poems could have been. And Martin said, you know, I got to go a little deeper with this, mm -hmm. uh, this grief thing. And I said, well, shit, I've got the poems. I don't have the courage. And he said, bring out the poems. And we did it. And so, yeah. Yeah, very important to me that you did go so deeply there. And it's been very, very special and very important, um, especially going through this process. Every time I've heard it through, I've heard something different. So I recommend when we get the recordings together, if uh, people want to review it, they listen again because there's a lot to hear. Um, there was that Sufi question oh, for yeah. Greg. Yeah. I'll give a really short answer to that. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not a religious person. The beloved to me is, is a, the whole point of the beloved is that they are a, a mortal creature or a mortal thing, a mortal person. So there's that one way in which I can't, there's, you know, to the extent that Sufism is about where the beloved in Sufi poetry is in theory and in theology is is God um, that's not that just changes the whole story for me it's not that way the whole point of the beloved the whole tragic grandeur of being a human is that the beloved is a mortal person just as the self is mortal having said that there's a, a Sufi poet uh, named Ibn Arabi Oh, and also I'd have to say, Sufis were always getting in trouble because they wondered whether they really were talking about God or some really cute guy down the street when they said beloved. So there is a whole controversy there. But Ibn Arabi says, he says somewhere, we must, be, we must love the beloved in all her forms. And I love that phrase, you know, the beloved in all her forms. I mean, that when, if, if, if that's the touchstone, and it's not, that's not the touchstone for Sufism, but if it was, then I would say, sure, I'm a Sufi, what the heck? And a Rotarian too. 
Huh. <laughs> Most okay. of the odd fellows. The odd fellows. Oh, my husband was an odd fellow. Really? I noticed. <laughs> I noticed that the Parkingtons had the words on their music stands, but no printed music. How much was the actual music rehearsed ahead of time? And how much was improvised playing off the chord structure and one another? Yeah, uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot. Uh, like the original performance that we did at Dodge in 2018, um, I would say had a little bit more improvisation just because it was so new. Um, and then for this, and be, because we were both in separate places, we had to, um, we had Greg record his part first and then we recorded our parts to Greg. And so there was a little bit more um, solidifying that we had to do in order to match up um, to what he was doing. Um, but there was definitely uh, a lot of, I guess, well, this time, this time around was more memorized, I would say. Um, but, you know, the songs, they never leave you, you know, so we didn't really have to rehearse much because they're just right there. That's true. You don't forget them. And I think that is the power of the word and the melody together. Yeah. And who's to say the next performance around will be I'm sure have different, will be something different too. And especially at certain times, you know, something new added in or different chords because that's kind of the nature too of um, working to Greg's rhythm. Um, however, he's happening to be reciting and however he's feeling in the moment, some of this of what we're playing, especially when we're playing under him, you know, we're, we're we are, um, you know, we do have to kind of meld together and work with him and improvise with him. So that's just uh, kind of naturally there too with, a, with the performance. If that answers the question. <laughs> oh. I think you're muted, Susan. I have a message that Abby is gonna answer the question or ask a question live. No? It must be technology. Oh, here's another question. I'm wondering what sketches of a poem look like for musicians. Hmm. Sketches of the poem. This was interesting too, because I remember Greg, I remember that you kind of musicalized the poem a little bit. You kind of stretched out some of the lines to offer to us in a form that was, that might be more open to like musical phrasing or like us not kind right. of thinking limited to the way that it's on the page. Yeah, like what um, we call line breaks. Yes. We, we got rid of those. We also put several, several times we took short poems, five right. and six line poems. And, you know, that seemed very imagistically or thematically connected and they became a single right. song, which was also fun to discover, but again, kind of wild, yeah. And also I tell you, you know, drop a line if you don't like it or something, I don't know. Guess and that was, that was so wonderful that you were so open mm -hmm. to us, to, to us kind of messing around with things or repeating things or just mm -hmm. like tweaking slightly a word once in a while. Um, simple things, not big, big deals, but yes. um, that was just, that was really very nice and kind of you too. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a fun, it was just a, a very, it's really nice when it's a very open back and forth, open to ideas, open to trying things. Um, I can remember something really sort of silly and small, but I mean, um, flow and swirl of the world carried along as if by a dark current is uh, what I wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes. you just turned it into, uh, um, carried along by carried a along by a right and it's you know and it's that's so much better and, and you know there didn't make any it, it, yeah you know that kind of simplifying that strength and took the strong words and the strong phrases yeah yeah um let's see i think we wound down the questions um and i noticed that in the chat there are the contact um, links for the Parkington sisters. 
which are also found on our website um, where their bios are with the performance and that'll stay up for a while. Um, and I think that we're going to do a little closing here now um, and ask everybody to um, join us in the bookstore, um, the virtual bookstore. There's a new message down here, which is also in the chat immediately after the event, um, the virtual book signing and Zoom room bookstore is open and um, I hope the sisters will join us there and Greg will be signing books. And um, let me just say some little words of closing. Thank you for coming this evening. Don't forget to attend our craft talks tomorrow at two with Tracy Brimhall and Eduardo C. Corral. Anyone interested in listening to participants in the Corral Francis M. Proofer workshops perform at the virtual open mic can go to the YouTube playlist from four to six tomorrow. Um, tomorrow at eight is our midweek reading with Lauren Boselar, Kevin Proofer and Martha Rhodes, followed by a, a virtual book signing in Murder on the Beach from 9.30 to 10.30. So we're running um, a little bit over, but we got a little bit of, um, a, little bit of uh, a late start. So thank you everyone for coming. Please do take a moment and, and, and go on over to the bookstore if you're interested. And I hope you guys will find your way there also. Um, you have the link for that for the bookstore. And um, we'll see you over there very shortly. Thank you for making this uh, festival an incredible experience. It's been wonderful. We, we wanted to have you in Delray Beach on stage. And this is pretty wondrous that we've been able to do it. And I thank everybody for that. And so does Miles. Thank you, Miles and Mimi, too, for making it possible. All right. Thank Good night, you, everybody. Susan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Oh, gosh, it was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs>